All right, so I had a little bit of time while David took the boys out to go fishing to record the video on how to make the chain and anchor that I had made for the ships we had. Figured since we're on a ship and sailing type of theme, it'd be helpful to make this one up for you. Take a look, and as always, any questions, comment below. I'll answer you when I can, and have fun with it. Thanks very much for watching it. So as you saw from the listing of supplies in the beginning, it's only a few supplies that you actually need. Um, I already pre-cut the wires. The long one is twice the length of how long I want my chain. That smaller one is about eight inches long. That's what's gonna be used to make the anchor. So you want your long wire twice the size. You want your anchor one eight inches long. Along with that, you're gonna wanna have on hand a bamboo, a bamboo skewer cut to about an inch in length, just like that. And then you're going to take the brown floral tape and wrap it up because you want it to have that sticky texture to help the wrapped wire also be able to stick to that skewer. So just wrap it up. Make sure both ends get covered. I've discussed it before how to wrap these in previous videos. So when you're done, tear off the floral tape. And there you go. That's going to turn into the crossbar of your anchor. So put the long wire aside, you're going to work with your shorter 8 inch wire. Take that wire and fold it in half. Have the ends meet. And then make sure you have a nice loop made at the top of the wire where it's been folded over. You don't want to close it up, you want to leave it an open loop. Then take that crossbar and put it on top of the wire. And you're going to take your ends and bring each one up and over on either side of the loop. Again, you want to keep that loop open, try not to smush it closed. And once you do that, you should have a cross shape between the crossbar and the wire. And from this point, you want to twist your two ends of wire together. This is going to turn into the neck length of your anchor. And for that, I made mine a little bit over an inch. Uh, you can play around with how long you want that part to be. That's the nice thing about this build is you can really customize it. When you get it to the length you want, you'll have this fun little dancing wire man. It then helps to put it onto the table and shape out your curves ahead of time because it's going to give you a sense of what your anchor will look like with those curvatures in there already. Then what you do is fold your wire ends over where you want your curved ends to stop. So you fold those over and do it to both sides. And the thing is, is if you realize one side's a little bit longer, it is a lot easier to manipulate it and fix it, like I had to here, to get it to the length that you want and the balance that you want. So that takes care of your ends. Now, this next part is where you're going to want to start twisting things. So I sped this up just so you wouldn't have to watch the tedious process of the twisting and the turning and the reshaping, but it does help to twist the ends of the wire together for the curved areas. Um, you can straighten them out at this point to make it easier on you. And once you kind of get them to where you want them to be, you can shape it, take a look, and as long as you like how everything looks, then you're good to go. Uh, you can also flatten the ends. Now, keep in mind, with a true anchor, it's turned perpendicular. However, if you want to have it how most people recognize an anchor, you can flip it around so it runs along with the curves. Next step is you're going to go back to that floral tape, wrap the neck and the curved edges with the floral tape, basically until you get the thickness that you want. Um, I work my way from top to bottom of the neck and then work out one arm and work the tape back down and bring, bring it back around to the other side. It's really the easiest way to do it. And again, you can link, you can stretch out those curved bits to make it easier, but that's really how I got the floral tape wrapped around the anchor. And then in the next part, what you're gonna have is your chain. And here's where you wanna have that longer length of wire folded in half like we've done before for the anchor. And you're gonna to wanna to grab the four to five toothpicks. That's really gonna be more up to how you wanna do things. But take your first toothpick and you're going to stick it into the loop and take the ends of the wire and twist it literally two times. One and two type of thing. 
Now at this point, don't twist the toothpicks anymore. You're actually going to twist the wire up against the toothpicks. But as you can see, there's a little space that's starting. And what you're going to do is after that twist of wire is stick in your next toothpick. And like I said before, you're not going to be twisting the toothpicks anymore. You're going to be twisting the wires against the toothpicks. So you give it a little twist, one and two. And then line up the next toothpick. And same thing, one and two twists. And basically keep doing this across the length of the wire, making sure to do only those two twists and not twisting the toothpicks. You're going to hold those toothpicks straight up and down so that what's going to happen is the opening of the chains all stay in pretty much the same direction. Now once you get your toothpicks going, what you can actually do is start wiggling out the first one and moving it down the line to keep the process going. That way you're not taking a whole bunch of toothpicks with a long bridge of toothpicks when you're done. So once you get it across the way, you're going to find you have this great chain effect done. You can take out all your other toothpicks except for the last one. Keep that last toothpick in the last spot. If you need to adjust, take another toothpick and kind of open up those spacings because sometimes they get a little smooshed. This helps to open them up again. And now that you have that done, you're going to work on attaching your anchor. So bring your anchor back and you're going to attach it through that top loop. And what I do is I take those end pieces of wire. I'll just twist them a couple extra times to make sure that last loop on the chain is secure. And then use those extra lengths to stick through the loop of the anchor, bring it up and around. And then this part was hard to show because it's a little bit more of a finite detail. Um, but you take the loose ends and what you want to do is wrap them up and around the top part, not on the anchor loop itself, but on the end of the chain that you just made. And just get it so that those end pieces are wrapped snugly around. And once you have those pieces where you want them, that really is where you can start to remove that last and final toothpick. And your anchor and chain will now be attached to each other. So just carefully wiggle out your toothpick when you're done. And look at that. You got your anchor attached to your chain. Just like that. Next phase is painting it. Um, really, you can use any dark brown. I did espresso from Craftsmart, metallic bronze from Craftsmart. Then I have this huge bottle of silver from Sargent. It's a line of paint. I don't even know where we got that one. We've had that forever. But start with your silver and you're going to basically paint your chain silver, both sides. So work the paintbrush down. You do want to get into every little nook and cranny that you can just to carry that metallic silver through the length of the chain. And what you do to one side, flip it over, do to the other side. Not too hard. Um, the manila folder I find works out really well as a painting surface because it doesn't stick and you can work on both sides at the same time. So little recommendation there. So once you do the silver and you have all those little nooks and crannies painted in, you're going to start working on that anchor. And that's where you can take that bronze metallic and start painting the anchor. I don't bother cleaning off the brush for the metallic part because I like the blending of the colors. If you want it to stay more of a true bronze, you can wash your brush. That's, again, a finishing technique for you to determine. But just wanted to clarify why I didn't wash my brush off. So get that bronze on the anchor apart. And again, when you do the one side, you flip it over, you're going to want to do to the other side. And just make sure you get it all nicely covered. But the nice thing is, is because you have that brown floral tape, uh, any little bit of brown that sticks through, it won't be too terribly obvious, and you'll see why in the next step. But you do want to try to cover it as best you can. All right, when everything is dry, you're going to take that what I had is an espresso brown and you're going to do a dry brush and the dry brush goes all over chain and anchor. What this does is give it that rusted salt water worn look to the metal that you'll see on anchors. So just make sure you kind of dab it through. You don't want to completely cover everything. You just want to get that spread of dark brown. When that's completely dry, you're going to go to a thin black wash and start painting with the anchor first is what I did. 
But here's the trick. Grab a paper towel and blot off most of the black wash. It's going to age that. It's going to make it look like old, worn, out in the weather metal, um, and really amp up the look of the piece. So you're going to do that both to anchor and chains, both sides. Don't forget to blot because the blotting is key. And I find to work in sections because if you try and wait to get everything covered on one side, it'll dry too quickly. And as you can see here, that's the one side of the anchor unfinished and the other side, it really does make a difference. So try not to forget that step. Uh, I just find it sort of like the finishing touch that makes it really look great in the end. And then you want to let that dry completely. But that's what it looks like with that thin black blotted off wash. So let that dry. And then when it's completely dry, what you can do is you can manipulate that chain. Since it's the wire, you can curl it up so it looks like a coil of chain, which you'll see in just a second. The other thing you can do is straighten it back out and then sort of make it look like it's draping. So if you want to hang it off something, it'll hold its shape or just straighten it out and figure out what you want to do with it when the time comes. But this is how I made my anchor and chain using the floral wire and floral tape and some paints. It's actually pretty easy. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, make sure to stop on by with any questions you might have. Happy to share this with you. Thanks for watching.